Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Claire Mesh. I'm the Director of uh, Support Services at eThink Education. And uh, today I wanted to share with you just uh, some of the lessons we've learned over the last um, couple years um, in just upgrading many, many, many clients um, and you know, some of the takeaways we've uh, wanted to share with you today. So um, for us, um, as you may know, we're a, a fairly uh, recent partner here in the UK. Um, so most of our clients are, are based in the US and uh, it does, the upgrade season tends to follow um, you know, the traditional cycle of, of the academic year. Uh, so I, I kind of was, one of, one of those times of the year is, is the winter. So I was kind of uh, tying in the uh, Christmas carol. Uh, so, you, you know, over the Christmas holidays, the winter break, um, usually, you know, mid-December th uh, through mid-January um, is one of the most popular times. Then, uh, you know, around the time of commencement, uh, you know, late May. And... Um, around uh, our uh, independence holiday in July, that's usually um, when there's a break between, you know, maybe a, a summer term that starts after the 4th of July, so that's another really popular time for us. Increasingly, though, we are seeing um, our clients are continuously offering courses, so sometimes it can be really tough um, to find that golden moment of opportunity that makes sense to have the downtime um, to do the upgrade. Um, but, you know, that's one of the, um, one of the approaches we take um, to maintenance uh, for our clients is we work with you to, um, you know, find the time that is exactly right for you. Um, you know, you're not going to be, it's not like we upgrade all of our clients at once, whether you're ready or not. So to give you a sense of how busy um, we are in a typical year or in the past year, um, we've done over 200 upgrades in the last year. Um, over, uh, more than 50 um, are currently on my calendar, uh, on our calendar before the end of uh, 2019. And these were um, you know, some stats I put together as of last week, and I think we've maybe even scheduled a 10 to 12 upgrades since then. Um, and um, as we prepare to bring our clients to a new version, um, there are a few things we do. Um, one of the things we specialize in is uh, SIS integrations, so that gives us some time to um, you know, test our plugins, make sure um, everything's working smoothly. Um, you know, some of our most popular you know, plugins, uh, just kind of you know, feel things out. Uh, we often do live professional development and training with our clients. Um, you know, some of them have that um, built in that they always, you know, do some sort of session with us leading up to an upgrade. Um, and we also do a lot of webinars. Um, you know, I think we ever since 3.3 um, three or 3, uh, I think back since 3.2, we've been doing a webinar with each new release just to um, kind of, you know, get the word out there and get clients excited about some of the new features they might gain from an upgrade. So uh, this uh, just kind of represents that season, as you can see, the peaks and valleys of how often we upgrade. Um, and this is from April of last year to um, up to a week ago. And um, I also wanted to show, um, you know, we do plenty of uh, minor upgrades as well. Um, so that's the, the smaller um, wave there down at the bottom, um, you know, we, often, you know, have clients come to us um, in our limited support model, they say, hey, you know, what, what's, what's going on with this is, you know, oh, maybe, you, oh, congratulations, you found a bug. Um, and congratulations, it is fixed in this point version, great news. So, um, you know, we often do uh, point upgrades on the fly, um, you know, evenings, whatever, it works best for the client uh, to make sure that whatever that issue is, is fixed. Um, and this uh, just kind of shows you uh, what's coming up um, in the next several months for us. Um, so as you can see, May is going to be very busy. Um, I'm surprised there aren't more July upgrades, as I mentioned in the past week. I think we've added a few to the calendar there. Um, so now uh, you kind of have a sense of the scope, how many upgrades we've done. Uh, now I'll share with you, you know, the lessons we've learned through walking these all those clients through this process. So. Um, 
lesson number one, it's important to uh, upgrade regularly um, for a variety of reasons. Um, security patches, bug fixes, new features. We want our clients to stay um, you know, up to date so that you know, there's so many small but mighty things that get added between versions and you know, can really dramatically change the user experience. Obviously, we want all of our clients to stay happy, and especially in the United States, you know, there is competition out there from other learning management systems. So we want them to have those latest and greatest features in their hands so that way you know, they don't feel like Moodle is old and, and clunky and, and they might look somewhere else if they're running particularly several versions ago. Um, another reason is, you know, the bigger the jump you make, the harder the change is. Um, you know, I, I know that we all have tales of, oh, we just upgraded from, you know, I think I heard someone mention from 3.0 to 3.6. That's, that's a big jump. Um, so, especially, you know, if you're changing from, you know, one of the classic themes to the boost theme, um, it's, it's really, you know, change management um, that we try to, you know, be supportive of that, you know, each, in each individual institution. Uh, so we recommend, usually recommend that clients stay within uh, two versions, um, you know, like I think many of you, based on the number of hands I saw yesterday about 3.6, um, you know, uh, some clients, you know, prefer to stay on the long-term support releases, and, and that's just fine. Um, but we do want people to stay, you know, relatively current, and we, 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 follow pretty closely um, and often use the, the Moodle uh, roadmap in the development cycle, you know, sort of as incentive to say, hey, you know, like bugs aren't going to be patching this version soon, so it's time to upgrade. Lesson number two is that test sites are your friend. Um, part of our process is that we spin up a copy of their live site, upgrade it, and you know, allow them to kick the tires, test any plugins, third-party integrations that they, they might rely on, and you know, make sure that you know, there are no surprises. Um, explore the scope of the changes, know what's coming. Um, like I said, test the plugins. And we also see this as an opportunity to take a step back and especially if you're making a bigger jump, uh, uh, look at some of those settings or even you know, settings that have been around for a long time but maybe you had it disabled for some reason but now you know, it's something you wanna revisit. Or you know, I think pretty popular is tweaking the activity completion defaults to just make it easier for instructors um, to, to set it up correctly without having to manually do that themselves. Um, and um, very popular as well is to give your site a makeover. Like I said, if you're if you were on a classic theme and now you're switching to Boost, um, we work with you through that process to get it looking just so. Um, Daniel was just giving a, a presentation uh, earlier about you know how we've you know really we really dig in and, and work through the CSS. You know some clients prefer to tinker with it themselves. Other clients say ah, we know nothing and, and we'll do it for you. So um, you know we really see that as a partnership. Um, Increasingly, we want we see clients want to match the branding of the college website. Um, so for for some, you know, they like the clean look of Boost. Others want you know some more visually marketing branding like elements. So um, we we typically suggest uh, third party plugins like Lambda or, or FordScent. Okay, lesson number three: Don't fear change. Um, change is change is good but you know you got to be ready for it uh, so uh one of the most surprising things to me um, in uh, you know 3.3 and 3.4, uh, depending on which which jump clients we're making you know the end dates great end dates we've been waiting for that it's here awesome then the course overview was added the amount of clients that didn't see the impact of how the, the end dates would control how the course, if they're using the dashboard, would show on their dashboard or not show on their dashboard. Um, they didn't see that coming and it was sometimes painful because they didn't use their test site. So let back to lesson number two, that's why it's so important and we really encourage clients to use their test site so that they can, they can see this, uh, do some usability testing um, so that they can anticipate um, those questions when, when instructors are suddenly, where is my course? Oh, it, it doesn't have an end date so it might be, um, in a different tab than you would expect it to be. Um, you know, it, and all of that it makes it important to, to plan ahead. If you've done your testing, you, you know what's coming, um, you can communicate that to faculty, you can uh, develop 
redevelop your documentation, update your screenshots, maybe prepare some training videos and materials um, to just kind of help make the transition as smooth as possible. And I think these kind of go hand in hand. Um, be prepared. So. Uh, developing, you know, some sort of uh, not only that communication plan, but some training. Um, you know, we offer um, a we we would call it like a, a train the trainer or a, or a you know what's new for admins session where um, we might. Uh, just go walk through with the LMS administrators, you know, who, uh, you know, what to expect, what kind of changes are coming that, you know, you know reading the documentation is one thing, but, um, you know, actually kind of seeing it in action, we often do it on their test site so they could be, uh, so they could be prepared. Um, you know, the, the faculty, some, some choose to train the faculty themselves, other do the training in house, but they want to get up to speed themselves. Um, we found that an ounce of training is worth, you know, its weight in gold as far as making that transition as smooth as possible. That was a really stark difference that we saw between the clients that had a, a smooth upgrade and were happy afterwards and those that, you know, it was a little rockier. And, and as I mentioned, um, anticipating the questions. If you're prepared, if you've done your homework, you've done the testing, you've received training, um, you can kind of, you know, maybe prepare some FAQs. Um, we've had some clients, oh, I know they're not going to know to look for that, or um, develop, uh, maybe customize some of the built-in user tours because you say, oh, I think people are going to struggle here. Let's let's tweak it so that we can actually, you know, draw attention to that. And Lesson number five, kind of referenced on the other on the other slides as well. But communication is is really um, what it comes down to. Um, we I often have a lot of regular uh, meetings with clients leading up to an upgrade to say, okay, what are um, you know, it goes beyond more like this is when the site's going to be down and here's what the version we're going to is um, kind of maybe uh, doing some some teasers in advance to let them know what's coming. Like I said, update your documentation, prepare some FAQs, um, and and then you know be prepared for when that flood of questions comes in. You know, are you going to have sort of um, self-help support resources? Are they going to be calling or contacting your help desk? Um, you know, whatever um, your uh, support structures are for instructors and students um, that needs to be, um, a, they need to be a part of that sort of effort um, to help get the word out. So to recap, it is very important that you upgrade regularly, that you use your test site, so important. Don't fear change. If you use your test site, you'll know what's coming. Be prepared and communicate. Um, so, I mean, I think to many of you who administrate sites, a lot of this is obvious, um, but, you know, when you see it at scale um, with as many upgrades as we've done over the past year, it is um, really, um, it, it becomes stark, those, uh, the differences between the, the institutions that kind of follow these lessons and those that don't. So, thank you very much. Thanks, Claire. Um, we've got a question straight away in there. This gentleman over here is going to ask the first question. Then if, any, if you've got another question, raise your hand and Bob and Helen will come with the microphone. Thank you, Claire. Um, communication is key uh, and it's very difficult to communicate with academics and get them to read emails, etc. Yes. So one of the things we've been doing is running a query in the database and find when assessments, quizzes, turn it in assignments, anything with an end date, in or around the, the upgrade date and just email them directly so we can say, dear such and such, you have an assessment in this module, uh, this is the assessment title, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a bit laborious. I, I've just done it. It took me about two hours to go through about, about 40 modules or something. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, people really appreciate it. And because you, you tend to get quite a good bit of coverage in there, because normally there's more than one person on the module, I, I, I email everybody who's a teacher mm -hmm. uh, on the course. So it's a, it's a good way of getting uh, some heads up for the really key people uh, that need to know. Yeah, that's a fantastic idea. Thank you. I'll definitely be sharing that. Any other questions? There was oh, one at the front here. Yeah, thank you. 
Hello, Glenn. Thank you so much for sharing uh, all those lessons learned uh, from you guys. Of course, you guys have a lot more experience in upgrading. 200 a year, that's a lot of upgrades compared to sure uh, like <laughs> our university when we do it only once a year. Uh, the question I had was regarding your major and minor upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, so we have an upgrade coming up. Uh, so I'm trying to manage the, the plugin upgrades for that. Because mm -hmm. uh, we're moving to 3.6, there are some plugins that do not have support for 3.6 right mm -hmm. now. So should there be an annual process to, or a regular process to upgrade those plugins? Do you guys don't go for plugins that are not supported by the latest version? How do you guys manage the plugins side of things? Yeah, great question. So uh, typically we, uh, that's I think one of the main reasons why I think the test site is so important. Um, you know, for, for point upgrades, it's not usually as much of a concern, but for the major upgrades, um, typically what we do is when we hand the client their dev site, we say, here's a list of all the additional plugins that you currently have installed. You might forget, some, some have a lot, some have a few, um, and, and usually uh, in our checklist that we provide them of things to go through and test, we say, hey, these are we've flagged these. They do not currently have a 3.6 version. Please make sure you test these and and then we kind of you know that it's sometimes it's a deal breaker there's one that just breaks and they say okay we're gonna wait we're gonna postpone our upgrade until it's supported or um, you know often we find um, you know oh if it has a, a if it's at least up to three, four, you know, it, it, it's probably going to work, but you should still test it. Please test it. Um, and we work through that with them and, and kind of, but, you know, we want to empower them to, um, you know, really have a part in that process because they selected these plugins, you know, over the years. You're welcome. Got a question from Tim over here. Well, actually, I was going to comment on that same issue from the other side of the fence. Okay. As someone who has plugins in the Moodle plugin database, and so they're about to release Moodle 3.7. I'm not going to mark that my plugins are compatible until I have tested to my satisfaction that they work. Mm -hmm. Now, the odds are that 90% of them will just work immediately. So sometimes you will be wanting to upgrade before the plugin developer has had time to test. And it, therefore, as you say, you have to do your own testing. It's probably not a big deal. If you do that testing, please comment in the plugins database. Okay. Say like, we tried this, it appears to work, because that's really, really helpful. Absolutely. And that's the way you okay. give yeah. something back. Yeah, happy to do that. How many would you say, because I know that historically people, you know, don't upgrade to like 3.7 straight away, for example. Yeah. What would you say like most of your clients on? Does it depend on by sector? Like. Uh, well, I would say we always, as soon as you guys um, announce a new version is out, uh, guaranteed I'm going to get at least five support tickets that say, when can we have it? And we say, hey, let's, let's, let's hold back. We usually, our, our, our general rule of thumb is we wait until the first dot one version to come out before we would consider it. But then again, we emphasize, hey, this is, this is hot off the press. We really, it, you know, double down on you need to test this before we'll, we'll go live. And, 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 you know, with 3.6, dot one came out, you know, almost immediately, so we waited uh, to, for dot two. Um, but that's our general rule of thumb. But again, uh, based on all the feedback we get working with our clients through testing, sometimes that varies. Okay, thank you very much, Claire.